One of the first ever steampunk pieces I made was this gauntlet. Now it's partially inspired by a scene in Iron Man and it's got this sort of repulsor crystal thing in the palm. I've always loved the way the technology is portrayed in that film. I mean, yeah, it's comic book, but it does go through a design process and a testing process, and that's kind of interesting for people who are into making things uh, like I am. Now, given that it's partially inspired by Iron Man, it was only logical for me to try and build some form of arc reactor to go with it. And I quite like it. I mean, I wore it to the Asylum Steampunk Festival some years back, and I thought it looked okay, but a few years on, I'm not quite so happy with the execution of this. So I started thinking that I might be able to uh, redo the gauntlet slightly and update it a bit, and also make a new arc reactor to go with it. The original one here was made out of the internal mechanism from an old VHS player, but I happen to have recently bought a lathe, so I thought maybe I could actually have a go at machining some metal myself. So I'm gonna have a go at doing that. So what I need is a big lump of aluminium and a crystal. I've always wanted to buy a lathe because one of the things that I found very difficult with making steampunk items and any other items for that matter is that you often find two pieces that look quite good together but they won't quite fit. And with a lathe you can obviously make uh, round things of specific diameters so I think it's going to prove quite useful. Now the last bit of lathing I actually did was something like 20 years ago when I was at school so I'm not exactly uh, knowledgeable about this so I'm really learning as I go in this case. It didn't take me too long to get the hang of this, so what I'm doing is just cutting in some detail here and trying to get something that looks interesting. So now that I've got a little bit of detail on the end of the aluminium, what I need to do is cut this down to size. Now this actually took a little bit longer than shown in the video, so I actually had to get an angle grinder on it to get through this piece of aluminium. It's pretty thick, so it took quite a while. Now I've got that cut off, I'm just going to drill a quick hole in the center and then use the lathe to widen that out so that the crystal can sit in the middle. So it's really just a question of slowly slicing pieces away here. As you can imagine, once I'd finished with this, I actually had a ton of aluminium shavings. And I gather that they're useful in either the production of rocket fuel or crystal meth, so I guess there's a use for me there somewhere, perhaps. So there's my piece, and um, actually looks pretty cool, I think. Um, the crystal fits in the center, so that's good. Now obviously I'm machining my own piece of metal here and that's not necessarily for everyone. When I made my first version of the arc reactor, what I did was to actually dismantle an old VHS player. And as you can see, they've got some nice machined pieces of aluminium inside. These are the heads that the tape runs around. And if you dismantle those, they do yield some really nice pieces of machinery. So as you can see here, they've got some nice brass pieces and some mechanical detail. And on the back of this one, it's actually got a nice sort of coiled magnetic thing on the back. I think this might have been part of the motor that drove the heads. Uh, and I actually used something like this for my original version of the arc reactor. So if you do want to have a go at making your own, putting apart a VHS player is a very good place to start. So as with the previous version, I need to find a way to light this up. Now back when I made the original version, electronics wasn't really my forte, and it still isn't now to be honest, but I've learned a little bit since then. Now I was looking for a 12 volt rechargeable battery that might fit in my pocket. And there were some available, but the reviews were pretty rubbish, so what I ended up doing was just getting this battery compartment, which simply holds eight AA batteries, and they've actually got more or less the same stats as the rechargeable versions. Now rather than using a single LED, what I've actually got is this LED panel which runs on 12 volts so I don't need to worry about adding resistors or anything to it um, it will run straight off my 12 volt supplier. As you can see that fits quite nicely in the hole that I've cut out in the centre of the aluminium. What I've also got is some sockets with some contact points and I've also got this four-way splitter so I can actually power four devices off this power supply. So here's a LED panel that I've connected to one of the connectors earlier. And as you can see, this thing is incredibly bright. Now it may not be apparent on the video quite how bright that is, but it's actually quite painful to look at. So I'm slightly worried that I might end up blinding people once I've got this thing finished. One of the problems with LEDs though is that they often don't show up very well in daylight. So I wanted something bright so it would show up in daylight. So I think this is gonna show up even in bright sunlight. So that should do the trick. 
So as you can see, that's going to sit in the uh, piece of aluminium like that, and the crystal is going to sit on top. So you sort of get the idea how that's going to look. Obviously, I need to cut a hole in the aluminium to allow the wires that need to escape. But I think that demonstrates the basic principle. So I'm just soldering some wires onto the LED panel and then threading those through the back of the aluminium. Now again, the original version was actually blue, and I did use a blue LED to create that color. Now these LED panels only come in white, so what I'm gonna do here is try out some lighting gels, just to try and change the color of the light. So that does look kind of cool, but one thing I noticed is that it's actually reducing the amount of light that's coming out. Now that shouldn't necessarily be a surprise, I suppose. The way these LEDs work is there's actually three LEDs per cell by the looks of things, red, green, and blue. So when you put a blue film over the top, it's actually filtering out two thirds of the light. So that might not be a problem if this thing is too bright and it's actually blinding people, uh, but I may actually decide just to leave it white instead. So I'll have to see how things are once I've actually tried this out. It's an event before I decide what to do. So the next thing to do is to find a way to actually hold the crystal into the piece of aluminium. What I've decided to do is to use these pieces from tattoo machines. Now, I think these are called contact posts. So here are the Mrs. Tattoo Machines and I've promised not to uh, destroy these or drop them or anything like that. So that's where the contact pin sits and, and as the needle flicks up and down you can see that that bounces off the spring thing there. So that's what they're for, but they're actually quite useful because they're threaded um, pieces of brass that are already machined. So they've got a pin that moves in and out, but they've also got threads at either end. So what I'm going to do is attach three of these to the front of the piece of aluminium by putting in some screw threads. I can then use the uh, screws that are in the contact posts to hold the crystal in place. So they're just going to sit on the aluminium like that. So in order to do that, I need to drill some holes in the aluminium, and uh, obviously I don't want to screw this up. So I've marked out on the piece of metal where the holes should be, and I'm drilling some holes with the pillar drill. I do need to sort the lighting out in the uh, workshop. It's a little bit dark there, but you get the idea. So in order to cut a screw thread into the metal, what I'm using here is what's called a tapping wrench. And it's a little bit like a drill bit, but instead of drilling a hole, what it actually does is to cut a screw thread into the hole as you twist it in. So that's kind of cool because it means you can screw something directly into the aluminium once you're done. So there we go, I've uh, tapped in some screw threads into the holes that I've drilled and those threaded bars have screwed in quite nicely. So now I've chopped those down to the correct height and that means I can now screw on my contact posts onto the piece of aluminium. And that's how that looks. Now the crystal's actually being held in place by the contact posts there. And actually that's really secure and um, they seem to be able to exert quite a lot of force. So I found that's pretty good at holding that in place. So the next step is to add some more mechanical steampunk detailing to this thing. It looks a little bit bare at the minute. So what I'm doing is to machine down some brass rod um, using exactly the same method that I did for the aluminium. I've got to say, I really do enjoy working with brass. I've never done this sort of thing before, but it's a really, really nice material to work with. It's very easy to work. You can do it quite quickly. And you can come up with some very nice looking pieces um, with relatively little effort. So there's a little sort of uh, junction uh, thing that I've made there. And I'm thinking that that can sit on the side of the aluminium piece and have a cable coming out the end. 
So again, I'm going to hold this on with a screw thread. So I'm cutting a screw thread into the piece of brass with my tapping wrench. As you can see, a bolt fits quite nicely into there. And now I'm doing exactly the same thing to the piece of aluminium. So I'm cutting in a screw thread into a hole I've drilled in the side of the aluminium. And that's going to allow me to use a piece of threaded rod to attach the brass piece to the aluminium. So that's how that sits. Now what I've also got is a long spring here. What this is, is something that you stick down the sink hole to, to unblock the pipes. They're basically big long springs. You can get them very cheaply on eBay or in pound shops for a couple of pounds and you get five meters. So that's pretty good. And I think that looks quite nice coming out of the piece of brass there. So using exactly the same method on the lathe, I've cut out some additional brass pieces. And um, in exactly the same way, I've attached these to the side of the aluminium. I've also got these things which are screw threads from some old VGA cables. Um, I really like the knurling on the end here so I've been hanging on to these thinking they might come in handy for something and I think this is probably the occasion. I've also got these things which I think are grommets from clocks. I'm not quite sure what they're used for. But they're quite nice little machine pieces. So what I've done is to drill a hole into the side of the aluminium and recess the grommet in there. And then I've put the screw thread from the VGA cable in the center. So it sort of looks like it might be some sort of dial that you can adjust. I've also attached some other brass pieces onto the side of the aluminium in exactly the same way that I did the other piece that I machined. So the next thing I want to do is to add a switch to the side of this. As I mentioned, it is a little bit bright, so I don't want to go around blinding people unnecessarily. So a switch on the side would be handy just so I can shut it off if I need to. So what I've got is a brass front plate, um, which I've just cut from a piece of sheet brass. And what I'm going to do is to drill a hole into the side of the aluminium, and create a hole that a switch can sit in. Now it's a bit of an ugly hole there, but it is big enough to fit the switch, but the front plate will cover all that up, so it should still look quite neat. There we go, and that's got quite a nice uh, satisfying funk when you turn it on, so that's good. One thing I did want to do before putting the rest of this together was to try and cut down part of the crystal. It hasn't really got much of a flat base, so it made it slightly awkward to fit in with the LED behind it. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work, so I've never tried to cut quartz before, but I figured trying to cut it with an angle grinder was probably the best bet. Um, it's actually quite interesting to see it lighting up like that as we go. This sort of works, bits flaked off as I went, but I did succeed in cutting it down slightly, so it's probably good enough. So what I've done here is to glue a metal ring on the base of the crystal here. What that is, that's come out of a hard drive. I dismantled a few of them a while back and they usually yield some interesting aluminium components. Um, I've put that on there because it will block some of the light coming out from the LED so the light only goes through the crystal. What I've also got some additional grommets from clocks similar to the ones I used previously. I'm just going to glue those on the side there and they're going to let me attach some thin braided cable to the crystal just to add some further mechanical detail. Adding. So that's how that looks with the cable on and to be honest this is more or less finished now I think. The final large scale detail to add is this hook on the back and what that's going to do is allow me to hook this over the front of my waistcoat so that it sits more or less in the centre of my chest. So there it is with the LED turned on and if I step down the exposure slightly you can start seeing some of the detail in the crystal. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I had this gauntlet which I made some time ago and it was always intended to be an Iron Man inspired gauntlet and I've had it for about eight years now. So it's in need of a bit of TLC and a bit of an update as you can see some of the components have come apart here. 
So the plan is to update all of this, give it a good clean, and I also need to remove the crystal from the palm and replace it with something that will hold the LED panel. So the first thing I've done is to create this brass piece here, which will just serve as a sort of a linking uh, conduit thing for the spring to go into. I think that's a bit neater than the original um, hole that it simply disappeared into. What I've also done is to replace some of the other components on the gauntlet here. This piece, for example, was originally just a Jubilee clip holding the wire in place. What I've also done is to do a small brass piece here, which will just allow this cable to terminate into the brass thingamajig here. That's just held in with a wood screw. So what I've made here is this little pan thing. So I've cut some brass tube to size and soldered a base on it. And I've also made this little conduit thing on the lathe that the spring will go into. That's just going to sit in the palm here where the crystal originally sat. And as you can see here, the LED panel fits quite snugly inside. So that looks pretty good, I think. So there it is installed. So what I've done is to take the original crystal that I had and to glue this onto another piece from a hard drive. What that's doing is covering most of the LED panels so that the light will mostly come through the crystal. What we've also done is to install a switch on the power gauge here as well. So what I've done here is actually to mount a switch in the palm, which is attached to my finger with a thin bit of leather. So what that means is that when I open my palm, the light will come on, um, sort of like an Iron Man type um, firing sort of thing. So in the film, he often opens his palm and fires. So that's sort of trying to mimic that motion. Um, the switch on the pressure gauge is there just so that if I don't want to accidentally blind people by opening my hand, I can actually turn the whole thing off. So here's everything put together and it's a lot less bulky than the original version of the arc reactor, which I showed you at the beginning of the video. That's good because as I've said on several occasions, wearing it for five minutes in the front room is very different to wearing it for five hours at a convention or an event. So you do need to take comfort into account and weight and all of those things. So this is quite lightweight and easy to wear. So I think that's going to be really handy once I've been marching about a steampunk event for five or six hours. So that's it for the video. Uh, I must say I've had good fun doing some laving on this, so I do plan to do some more in the future. But for the time being, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ingenious devices keep me alive in perpetual motion. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.